Hello everyone, welcome back and in today's video, we'll solve problem 5 from the check your understanding section and this is from the chapter of work power and energy. So we have an arrangement of a pulley mass system and in this case, the middle block is initially at rest, keeping the portion of the cord between the pulley straight and then it is released. So we have to find its acceleration when the two segments of the cord between the pulleys make a right angle. So by this they mean when the configuration is of this sort, this is the angle that they're talking about. So this angle, when it becomes 90 degrees, we have to find the acceleration of the middle block. So that's the problem. So let's begin with the analysis. Okay guys, so this is how the initial situation is looking like. So clearly this block is going to accelerate downwards as the only vertical force acting on this part is the weight of the block, right? So this is going to move down and hence as a result, these blocks are going to go up. Okay, guys, so what I did here is I replaced the you know, central block with a, the red point so as to make the diagram a bit more cleaner. So the initial configuration is represented by the blue string and the red line is going to be the final configuration. So let's say the, okay, so now guys, we have to define one variable. So let's say this angle that, that the string uh, at any general time t makes with the horizontal, it's let's say theta. Okay guys, so uh, at this particular instant, the, the mass is going to have some velocity. Let's call this velocity as v. Uh, when the red mass reaches this particular point, it will have some velocity, let's call it V prime. And by symmetry, even this block will have a velocity of V prime when it reaches. Okay, so now we need one relation between V and V dash. For that, we'll use the string constraint. Okay guys, so now what I'm doing is I drew the, you know, FBD of this string over here and I'm gonna mark the velocities of the endpoint. So this point of the string is moving upward with a velocity of V prime. And this end of the string is moving down with a velocity of v. So we took this angle to be theta, which means even this angle is going to be theta. The rate of increase of the length of the string uh, on the left side is going to be the component of v along the string, right? So that is simply v sine theta. So the rate at which the string length increases must be equal to the rate at which the string length decreases. And the uh, rate, and rate of decrease of string length is simply v dash. So these two have to be equal if you are trying to make sure that the string length remains constant. So we obtain this relation by using the fact that the string length will remain constant. Okay guys, so now as we have to determine everything when theta equals 45 degree, so if I plug in theta equals 45 degree in this relation, uh, I'll get V equals root two times V dash. So the central block is moving faster basically. Okay guys, so now what I'm doing is writing down the energy conservation equation. So I can basically say that delta P plus delta K equals zero in this case. So we have to talk about the situation in which theta equals 45 degrees. So Y would be L in that case, right? And this length over here is going to be root 2L. Okay, so now let's write down the energy con conservation equation. So the central block descended by height of L. So the change in its potential energy is going to be minus MGL. And the two of the other blocks, they ascended by a certain amount. And that we can find out by observing the change in the string length. So initially the length of this part was L. Now it became root 2L. So this block ascended by an amount of root two minus one L. So two of the block ascended by an amount of root two minus one L. So its potential energy increase would be this much. Okay, so now the increase in kinetic energy. So the central block has a velocity of V. So its kinetic energy would be half mv squared. And two of the other blocks, uh, velocity is V dash. V dash, we determined it to be V by root two. So this is gonna be V square by two. And this should all add up to zero. Okay, and after solving this equation, we'll get the velocity of the central block to be this value. Okay, so now let's talk about the acceleration. Okay, so let's say the acceleration of the central mass is, is A downwards because we can clearly see by symmetry that uh, the acceleration will be in the vertical direction. So let's just assume it to be in the downward direction. And similarly, let's say the acceleration of our block is A dash in the upward direction. Okay, so now we can write down the F equals MA equations. So the left mass, it's going to be MG minus T root two equals MA. And for the right mass, it's going to be T minus MG equals ma dash. Okay, so f after solving this, we actually get a relation between a and a dash. So let's say this equation is equation number one. Now, how do we get an equation number two? And the answer to that is we have to somehow link it to our string constraint. And after, you know, st solving our string constraint, we actually obtained uh, this particular relation over here. And that was v, that is the velocity of the central block was v dash times cosecant 
theta. So now as, as we have the velocity of the central block, we can differentiate it to obtain the acceleration of the central block, right? So, so let's actually do that. So if we differentiate it, uh, LHS will become dv by dt and the RHS differentiation will actually have two terms, right? So one term is dv dash by dt times cosecant theta and the other term is going to be the derivative of cosecant theta that is minus cosec theta cot theta times d theta by dt multiplied by v dash. Okay, so now what we obtain in the left hand side is the acceleration a of the body and dv dash by dt is uh, a dash. So this is the expression that we're getting for a and a dash. The one thing that is bugging us over here is the quantity d theta by dt because, because other, otherwise this expression is simply non theta and v dash we already know right so the only thing that is yet to be found is d theta by dt so let's try to determine what that is okay so i want you guys to observe this part of the string so this is the angle theta that we took right so we took the angle theta to be basically the angle that that the string the middle string that is basically the string over here makes with the horizontal and this end of the string is moving down with the velocity of v right so d theta by dt is, is basically the omega of this line over here so let's say if i draw a line as you can see as this moves down the angle theta is increasing so d theta by dt is essentially the rate of change of this line if i drop a perpendicular to our string this angle is going to be theta so the omega of this line that is d theta by dt we can write in one line as a perpendicular velocity which is v cos theta divided by the length of the string now the length of the string was actually a function of theta right so in this particular case we took the angle as 45 but in general terms this is going to be l secant theta right so we are going to write uh, l secant theta over here so this is going to be v cos square theta divided by l so finally after substituting the value of d theta by dt we get the a expression as this particular value so now what i'm going to do is plug in the value of theta and v into this expression. Okay, so now after substituting, now we have two equations uh, on a and a dash. So we let's just solve for a. Okay, so and after solving, we'll obtain the value of acceleration as minus g by four, meaning that the acceleration is opposite to the direction that we assumed. So the central block is going to accelerate upwards with an acceleration of g by four. So that was my solution to this question, guys. So if you have any doubts, you can comment down below and do like, share, and subscribe if you enjoy the video. And that's it. Thanks for watching.